Welcome back. <clears throat> In the open source case study, we took a look at communications and introduced the channels and some of the media types available today. In this section, we'll look at communications and understanding. First, we'll start with virtual team composition and communications. The open source case study is somewhat useful for understanding practical communications for global virtual teams. However, it's important to know thyself. Different virtual teams may not have the deep domain knowledge that is on the open source virtual teams. Knowledge composition will vary between the different types of teams. Some teams will have a subject matter expertise in a variety of areas, but not a deep understanding of a common knowledge domain. Unlike the open source virtual teams, they don't have a deep domain knowledge in one common area. So on virtual teams, team members should be specific in their requests and never assume anything. To avoid misunderstandings, managers need to ask for clarification and check for understanding. Open source team members can comprehend and condense diverse software requirements into succinct descriptions using lean media because of their deep knowledge. But for other teams, more precise communication is required, and forethought must be given to ensure the message is understandable by the recipient. This highlights an important communication principle. To be understood, a transmitted message must be placed into a conceptual framework. Another contrast between business virtual teams and open source virtual teams is that the typical business virtual team is subject to time and budget pressures. They don't have the luxury of starting 247 forks and branches that go many different directions and may not pan out. Technology has made sending an email, text, voicemail, tweet, or blog post message very easy. Yet these communi communication media do not necessarily enhance our ability to organize our thoughts into an understandable message. Establishing a working transnational team requires regular feedback, ongoing communication, active listening, and attention to what individuals and the group find acceptable and unacceptable. Claude Shannon noted that communication engineering is separate from the semantics of messages. Well, all of this is fine and good, but what exactly is communications anyway? Communications is transmission of messages that will be exchanged through a system that consists of essentially five parts. A source, a transmitter, a medium, a receiver, and a destination. The process for communication by these five parts is shown on this slide. First, the source creates a message, the transmitter encodes that message, the transmitter sends the message by connecting it to a medium, a channel and a medium. The channel and the medium relay the message over to a receiver who gets the message, decodes the message, and then the destination gets the message and understands it or perceives it and sends feedback. This was uh, first published in 1948 and it's uh, Shannon's communication model but which has been extended over the years to include receiver feedback. So Shannon's communication model starts with a message which is encoded and then transmitted 
received and decoded and perceived by a recipient. The sender selects the appropriate channel for the message. The channel can be one of two types, spoken or written. The message is transmitted to the receiver through a medium, for example, telephone, email, discussion board, video conference. The choice of channel and medium depends on the formality, speed, receiver location, receiver culture, and the type of message. We will go over some of the rules in the next section of tonight's lecture on how to select the appropriate channel and medium. Effective messages focus on one topic and should limit the amount of information per message according to the type of media. Telephone and email for less information, documents in a team repository for more information. Communication barriers are also known as noise and limit the ability of the receiver to understand the message. To overcome noise, a number of communication strategies help get messages across successfully with global virtual teams. These include communicate continuously, be an active listener, watch for potential misunderstandings, keep communications simple and clear, use the different technologies to their advantage, build relationships and trust. As we talked about in our leadership lecture last week, trust is essential for virtual teams. Show respect for other cultures. In other words, craft your message with the destination culture in mind. Be sensitive to cultural differences and ask, uh, as a receiver, uh, ask for clarification if you don't understand something. A common danger in international communications is a language or perceptual barrier. Some technologies are better for teams with different primary languages. Of the various media choices, email is the more attractive for global virtual teams than the phone. The phone may be a more personal means of communication, but it is harder to use than email for speakers of other languages. Different cultures may place received information into a conceptual framework that is different from the senders, and that can lead to misunderstandings also. Communications is successful only when the receiver understands the message. Communication barriers block the intended meaning of the sender. Noise is any impairment to the communication process. Noise includes the perceptual and language difficulties on the, on the previous slide. Any step in the communication process can be blocked by some sort of interference or noise. Such noise can be caused by a variety of communication barriers including perceptual and language differences, restrictive environments, distractions, deceptive communication tactics, and information overload. As to perceptions, our minds organize a stream of sensation into a mental map that represents our perception of reality. Even when two people have experienced the same event, their mental images of that event may not be identical. Because your perceptions are unique, the ideas you want to express may not fit into other people's conceptual framework and you may have difficulty being understood. As a sender, you should choose the details that are important to you. As a receiver, you try to fit new details into your existing framework. However, if a detail doesn't quite fit, you are inclined to distort the information rather than rearrange your conceptual framework. This is a process known as selective perception. 
Noise can also be distractions such as technology problems or emotional distractions of the receiver. Information overload is also noise. Each of us is inundated with relevant messages, but the problem is exasperated by spam and other irrelevant messages. To minimize barriers to understanding, first understand your audience. You can use a demographic analysis and understanding of various cultural contexts to help you craft understandable messages. Create an open culture in the organization, be it a team or a corporation. Reduce the number of levels in the chain of command. Increase the number and use of horizontal networks in addition to using the existing vertical chains. And promote and encourage two-way communications. And an open culture is important for communications. Restrictive environments create noise. Hierarchical organizational structure is also an impediment to two-way communication, which is increasingly necessary. Every link in the communication chain is open to error. By the time a message travels all the way up or down the chain, it may bear little resemblance to the original idea. Moreover, if a company's formal communication network limits the flow of information in any direction, upward, downward, or horizontal, communication becomes fragmented. Lower level employees may obtain only enough information to perform their own isolated tasks, leaving only the people at the very top of the organization able to see the big picture. When managers use a directive and authoritarian leadership style, information moves down the chain of command but not up. Another way to minimize barriers to understanding is make your message audible. That helps make it clear. If you can say it, it's going to be more understandable uh, to your audience. And avoid emotionally inflammatory wording. Communications is hard enough and understanding is hard enough without aggravating people. And don't send unnecessary messages. We mentioned uh, the problem with span and information overload. It's important to uh, choose the appropriate channels and media. Choose the appropriate channel first, then choose appropriate media in that channel. And again, there are two channels. There's verbal channel and, or a written channel. More so than other organizational staff, virtual team members need effective communications and information sharing. The ability to raise concerns, get answers, and brainstorm. This means they must leverage communication tools to compensate for the lack of face time. It's best to use a mix of communication approaches. Let's take a look at the communication channels and media available to virtual teams. The sender must choose to use either an oral or a written channel. When selecting a channel or medium, you must consider how your choice will affect the style, tone, and impact of your message. To do so, you will need to consider a number of important factors. The first is media richness. It's an important aspect of a medium is uh, its uh, it, Richness is determined by a medium's ability to convey a message by means of more than one informational cue. Its ability to facilitate feedback and its ability to establish personal focus. So media richness is the ability to convey a message by more than one means of informational cue, its ability to facilitate feedback, and its ability to focus, establish personal focus. Face-to-face -face communications is the richest medium 
because it is personal. It provides immediate verbal and nonverbal feedback and it conveys the emotion behind the message. But it's also one of the most limiting media because you and your audience must be in the same place at the same time. Other factors that might influence you to choose an oral channel is if immediate feedback is needed, the message is simple, a permanent record is not needed, and the audience can be gathered together at the appropriate time. On the other hand, a written channel is best for complex messages. The sender does not need immediate feedback, a permanent record is required, audience members will be using the message at different times over an extended period of time, and you need to minimize distortions, for example language and perceptual distortions. Other factors are important to consider when selecting channel and medium. If you want to emphasize the formality of your message, use a more formal medium such as a memo, letter, or formal presentation. If you want to emphasize the confidentiality of your message, use voicemail rather than a fax, send a letter rather than a memo, go, or go over the matter in a private conversation rather than during a meeting. If you still want an emotional commitment, consider a visual medium such as a speech, a videotape, or video conference. If you require immediate feedback, face-to-face -face conversation is your best choice. However, you'll need a, if you need a written record, you'll probably want to write a memo or a letter. Time is an important factor to consider when selecting a medium. If your message is urgent, you pro you'll probably choose the phone, fax, or next day mail. Oral communications media include face-to-face -face conversations, telephone conversations, videotaped addresses. Face-to-face -face is the richest medium, but is limited to co-located staff. And it's limited to groups of relatively small numbers. Telephone conversations establish a confidential tone and extensive interaction with one individual. Teleconferences also enable quick feedback, but with less confidentiality and less personal interaction. Video conferences add the impact of visual stimulation to enhance the message. Finally, before choosing a channel and medium, consider what your audience expects or prefers. In addition, various cultures tend to favor one channel over another. For example, the United States, Canada, and Germany emphasize written messages, whereas Japan emphasizes oral messages, perhaps because it is a high-context culture and uh, so much of the message is um, incorporated in non-visual, uh, non-verbal cues and implied meanings. Written channels, written messages take many forms, but uh, both traditional and electronic. Written communication media includes letters, memos, email, and reports. At one end are the scribbled notes people use to jog their own memories. At the other are elaborate formal reports that mag rival magazines in graphic quality. Regardless of the form, written messages have one big advantage. They let you plan and control the message. These media have more control because the author can consider their communications in more detail than in interactive oral media, which requires a quick response. Memos and emails are best for daily operational communications. 
letters and reports are used for more formal communications that often follow specific formats in a methodical approach. However, a serious drawback to written messages is that you miss out on the immediate feedback you would receive with many oral media. A written format is appropriate when the information is complex, when a permanent record is needed for future reference, when the audience is large and geographically dispersed, and when immediate interaction with the audience is either unimportant or undesirable. For global virtual teams, information technology enhanced media are needed. Global virtual team communication must deal with time zone differences, great distances, and audience dispersion. Email, instant messaging, websites, blogs, discussion boards, and document repositories are useful written media. Voicemail and video recordings are useful oral media. Telephone, teleconference, video conferencing, and web conferencing are possible in overlapping work hours. The meeting is a common form of communications and is a vital part of virtual team management and leadership. So the fundamentals of virtual meetings are you have to agree on several meeting norms. Members participate from quiet settings to reduce um, external noise. You start early to validate that the IT is working for everybody. You should involve everyone at the virtual meeting. Use video to increase engagement test technology used to host the meeting. Have a backup technology in case the primary technology fails. And in our particular case, we've got join.me as a web conferencing backup. And beyond that, we've got uh, recordings of the sessions that people can go to and review as well. And we have discussion forums so that you can ask questions interactively. Train members on the communication, information, and collaboration tools. And if affordable, publish meeting notes in the major languages of the team. The world of decision making is built from questions and answers that attempt to remove any mis missing relevant knowledge. However, decision making is often inconsistent, unstable, and an interactive rather than a clear linear process. To address this issue, management theory has emphasized situational awareness and sense making. The basic idea of sense making is that reality is an ongoing process and situational awareness emerges from efforts to create an ordered awareness of what occurs. For global virtual teams, communication media support situational awareness. So you can create or enhance situational awareness with a white pages that contains every team member's contact information. Extend the white pages with a yellow pages that has team members' resumes and task assignments. Also consider the following. For situational awareness about activities and tasks in your project, document repositories, project systems and status meetings, status meetings are a valuable media to accomplish that. For situational awareness of organizational processes, organizational charts, expertise directories, and workflow tools are useful media. For situational awareness on resource availability, instant messaging, team calendars, and individual schedules are useful media. 
for situational awareness on the work environment, team dashboards with news and environmental data, as well as desktop video meetings and stored video are useful media. Okay, let's take a break and we'll come back and go over communication practices, practical communication uh, activities for global virtual teams.